to Cousin Dan. Tonight I'm going to show you how to fix chipped paint on your car. Now this is going to be very, very unorthodox, and so you just be ready for all the trolls and the naysayers that are going to come out commenting on this, but I promise you it works. So just pay attention, I'll show you how it's done, and very cheaply by the way. So across the front bumper of this car we have three types of, of damage. We have this chipping here uh, that went down to what looks like the primer, and then we have this divot that is uh, down through the aluminum and, and, and you can see it's deep enough that my fingernail can catch on the edge of it. And we have this plastic that rubbed off of the bumper of the other car. That's just on top of the paint. And then we have really small scratches underneath this plastic that was kind of done at the same time. So what we're going to do is going to take this off. We're going to deal with the little scratches. We're going to deal with the chips and we're going to deal with this divot. Here's a closer look just showing how the warm wet rag takes that plastic right off the surface of the paint. You just got to rub it a little bit and uh, just finds a way to stick to the rag and take it off. It's better if your paint is newer um, or uh, just just less porous, less damage over the years. Sun damage and stuff can allow this sort of thing to hang on a lot tighter, but you see it really just comes right off with a little bit of water on a rag. As of now I've taken off everything that I can with just the wet rag. Right here we can see that there's a little bit that I could not get with the water. It's probably because they're in the grooves of tiny little cracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of polishing compound and I am going to just barely put some on a little soft uh, cotton cloth and I'm going to rub that into this little section. And you'll quickly see that I can pull out all the debris, the plastic from the other car, dirt that may have gotten in there since the crash everything comes right out now and I haven't done it perfectly but you can see here it's already quite a bit lighter so we're taking things out of the way for uh, for the next step you can use rubbing compound for this step but you just have to be really careful because it's a lot more abrasive than polishing compound it's gonna work faster but you're also gonna be taking off more paint so just just know that and be very careful if you do that so what we've got here is some chip paint and we have a divot and you can hook your nail in there and so what we have to do is somehow fill that aluminum in and we have to uh, feather the edge of this before we paint it. So I'm using some, uh, some 400 grit uh, wet or dry sandpaper. I'm, I'm just going to keep it dry for now and I'm just going to work against the edge and uh, roughly cut down that edge and smooth it out uh, where the paint chip edge is. So if I get that taken care of then I'm going to go ahead and wet sand it, smooth the whole thing out and, uh, and then we'll take some body filler to this. Okay, now that I have that out of the way, I'm going to wet sand it. So I'm using the same 400 grit sandpaper, but I'm just putting water on it. I just have a little tub of water and I'm dunking in it and wet sand it. It's just like it sounds. You just uh, make sure that every couple strokes you uh, put it back in the water, get some more on it. And what this does is the water carries away the particles. You can kind of see that there. And um, it's just a more effective way of uh, sanding things to bring them to a nice smooth consistency across the board. But be careful, you can sand too much, clearly, um, you know, as you can imagine. So what I'm doing is I'm just smoothing it out, and for a job this small, it really won't take that much time. But I can already feel like right here is like perfect, here is really good. I'll just work at this for another couple minutes, get it just as close to perfect as I can, and then we'll show you what's next. Alright, so I've got this thing wet sanded, it feels real nice and smooth. I'm just going to take a paper towel, wipe away the uh, debris. Make sure it's nice and dry all around the whole thing and feel it again. And it feels very nice except for right there. That's knit, that uh, notch in the aluminum is still there and so I'm just going to tug a little bit of body filler in there. Just just tiny little bit, just enough to overcome that notch and fade it out this way. And then uh, we'll wet sand that again and make it nice and smooth. Body filler is very simple to use for something like this. Just plop a little bit of it on there. Obviously, I only need a very small amount for this. Put an, uh, there we go. Put a little bit of hardener in there, just uh, accordingly with the container. You know, follow the directions. Some of them, I think, are different between brands. Anyway, take a little. Uh, I have an actual Bondo spatula thing, but it, you know, it doesn't matter for something like this. Just mix it up as if you were uh, mixing up some drywall mud. Make sure the color is consistent. The hardeners will be different colors. I think Bondo is red and this brand is blue, whatever. Um, just make sure that uh, it's mixed up consistently. The, the, the hardener is always going to be a different color from the resin. But anyway, so now I'm just going to just dab it on there 
and then do a nice broad stroke across the whole thing without putting too much pressure on it. See, if I put too much pressure on it, then the paddle will actually follow the groove of the car and I will be doing nothing and it would just be a waste of my time. So, I'm just grazing over the whole thing, making sure that the filler actually stands above the dip that I'm trying to fix, because of course that's our goal. And put a little bit more on there. It looks like I'm good. Obviously this is rough. This isn't what we're going to leave it like. This is, this is just, uh, I'm going to let it harden like that, and then we're going to sand that down to the shape of the car that we want. Yeah, Alright, most important step here, turn in your conservative talk radio, pull out an ice cream sandwich, and uh, wait for your hardener to dry. Alright, feels pretty good and dry. I'm just going to take this uh, 100 grit sandpaper, again on a block, and I'm just going to lightly, keep in mind lightly, go over this thing because it's such a rough paper that I don't want to push down and then uh, and then form the the filler to the to the defect underneath of it just as we would if we push too hard on the on the paddle when actually applying the filler so just lightly go over that's why you have the block really so that it can bridge between this level and this level over the over the the, the valley in between so we're just uh, actually I'm going to use it long way for that very purpose and I'm going to roughly go over it lightly until I can pretty much see that I'm at a good level. And uh, it's going to be very quick with, with paper that's this rough. You can use paper that's not quite as rough, but I like this because it's indiscriminate. It cuts away anything. And when you're shaping something, using rough paper is, uh, is a good technique because then um, you know you're, you're working with the shape and it doesn't it doesn't start doing waves because it's discriminant of what it's actually going to start what, what it's actually going to cut so it's feeling pretty good I'm just going to keep working this for a couple minutes and get this nice and smooth basically uh, make this shape match this shape and this shape and then we're going to prime it okay well it feels pretty much like I want it to so I'm just going to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and put it on a paper towel and clean the area very well I want to get off get off all the uh, wax and grease and silicates and anything that, uh, that might be on there that's going to interfere with the primer I'm about to put on. Okay, now that I got it all cleaned up, I'm just going to use some masking tape and uh, just go around the area where I sanded and um, try to get as close as you can, you know, it'll help things out in the long run. Um, but I'm just going to mask this in and then we will be priming in a second here. Um, pretty simple. You don't have to worry really about the edges too much because uh, the next step actually includes feathering these edges anyway. So uh, yeah, it's really not that hard. Alright, back in a way here you can see I've been working on some other spots too. But um, what I'm going to use is this filler primer. Uh, what it does is it builds up uh, a little bit on the surface so that uh, heavier scratch marks are, uh, are just filled in. Um, pretty cheap stuff. Uh, very effective. Uh, you can use good paint over top of it. I like to use it. Um, just gonna, I'm already shaking it up a little bit, and I'm just gonna apply it just like you would a spray paint. Um, don't do too heavy. Don't get any runs in it. Uh, but use multiple coats um, if you feel like you need to fill in something more. Um, and then, and then maybe when it when it dries, just sand it away and get it smooth. Uh, that's the other good thing. You can sand this stuff, and it it works out really well. <laughs> 